Old dirty gur mix up mashup. Speed of mashups. You want to talk about my new tattoo? <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's Hawkeye Pierce and Alphonse Musha. Mucha. 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 It's Mucha. Mucha. Oh, Mucha. In a, it's in your a mashup. tattoo. In a mashup. In a mash. Up, oh, Hawkeye Pierce from Mash. <laughs> uh, why are we Why are we starting the show like this? Because uh, we're going to talk about something that confuses the crap out of a lot of people, and it's what is the difference between Art Nouveau and Art Deco? Oh hell, I don't know. Yeah. So, it's... um, how does your tattoo come into play here? Well, Alphonse Mucha was an art. Nouveau artist. We'll cover him, I promise. Okay. However, uh, the TV series MASH with Hawkeye Pierce, uh, you know, Alan Alda as Hawkeye Pierce is not Art Nouveau. It's, uh, but it was the longest running like TV show ever. ever. I think The Simpsons finally beat it like with 10 Simpsons. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and they just keep going. Um, um, welcome to our story that started in the, I was in the fourth grade. When I was 10, it was 26 years ago. Yeah, it was like second or third grade. Yeah. This, this is Art I Swear. I'm Vanessa Van Alstein. I'm Katie Gibbs. And uh, this is Art I Swear. Uh, today we're talking about Art Nouveau versus Art Deco. Fight! 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 Um, we're going to give you some compare and contrast so that maybe you can you can learn some stuffs. Oh, goody. I like learning the stuffs. Learning the stuffs. We've already covered an, a, an Art Nouveau artist, uh, you know, old Gustav Klimt. That's the Vienna Succession School. That's considered a school of Art Nouveau. It's not called Art Nouveau in every uh, culture. So if you're uh, if you're like, I want to I want to learn more about Gustav Klimt, we got a podcast for you. Check it out. Check it out. Oh, Artistware.com. What 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 in the book? Oh, um, I'm not butters. I keep telling my husband that, but he doesn't believe me. I don't believe him. So what's so? Uh, do you have any questions, comments, or concern before we continue? Like funny Katie things you're gonna say? I feel like I'm building you up here, and you gotta say something really witty now. Um, spam, 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 spam. No, spam. let's just go back to old dirty girl. Anyways. Doom, de doom, doom, doom. Ah, raw. Doom, de doom. So, uh. One of the big differences between Art Nouveau and Art Deco is time periods. Art Nouveau is like 1890-ish to the end of World War I. Um, the French school is the school that's called Art Nouveau, and it, that just means new art. This is correct, Katie. This means new art with your French minor. Yeah. How do you say old in French? D'Artefois. She just punched me in the face while she said that. I'm going to have a black eye. I'm crying. Uh, it's good because I pronounced Dartefoy correctly as I punched her. It's, it's, she's a graceful lady. I'm muting her pain. <laughs> You're mocking my pain again. That's why I love you. Anyways, so it's obviously, okay, French school, Art Nouveau. In America, this is your arts and crafts movement. Um, so Frank Lloyd Wright. Frankly, right? Anybody? 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 House of Falling Waters? Anyone? Anybody? Anybody? Is, it, is that the one that's like plagued by mosquitoes and kind of? It has a creek running through it, so it's possible. I know it, they're having some trouble with it sinking right now because the water. Right. Um, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it's in Pennsylvania. I'd love to see it. I oh, need yeah. to. I need to go see my friend Renee Mason, a erotic novel writer, and like force her to take me. I think you might need to continue this sentence or I don't feel like just check out uh, loving Dr. Vincent. If you're over 18 and like uh, really dirty books, it's conspiracy theory porn. You can't go wrong. I just, maybe your husband doesn't need to listen to this podcast. If it's, you're trying to get erotic authors to take, you know, you. she's like, I have signed books of hers because we're friends. He knows. All right, that's fair. <laughs> Carry on. I'm going to write a book and I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign it. Eat my D. No, that's that's not. That's not ladylike. So, okay. In Great Britain, Art Nouveau is called the Glasgow style, and we'll kind of cover why. Um, in Germany, it's Judenstil. I want to say I'm saying that right. 
You Let's Germans, go with it. You're just close enough to English to make it really confusing. So this is to repeat Art Nouveau, 1890 and World War One. So guess what that means? Guess when Art Deco starts? Um, 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 ooh, I know, I know. What, I know. Who, what, Katie? Katie in the front? Um, is it right after World War II? I read the outline. It, it's supposed to be World War One. I, I tricked you. I, I <gasps> typo. You asshole. I typo. I typo. <laughs> this is me. I you was... can now, like, mostly read the things I type on the internet because of spell correct, so I feel like you should just be grateful because you used to talk to me on AOL. I'm pretty sure that required a Vanessa to English dictionary. Alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, so... I'm making fun of my spelling, not my diction, bitch. <laughs> no, Alcohol was my translation. I would take a shot and then I would read it. Oh. And then oh. it would make sense. Oh. I do the same with Jill, so it's okay. I have a butthole, what can I say? She spells so much. It's still incorrect, but it's so much different. It is Hers is like willfully That's incorrect. Jill and I, like, it's like I've said before, like, we kind of don't get along because we're too much alike. Two halves of the same coin, man. Yeah, so like, you know... We, like, enjoy each other's company to a point. <laughs> it's a very thin point. You're both, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, you're both very strong. Bitchy women. I was going to say. Centered. Like, you have, you both have very strong senses of self. And so when two people like that who are very strong and not very flexible be are in the same room, even if they have mostly same values and morals, it's the mostly part. It's, I have another, I have a friend who sometimes I feel like the problem with our friendship is that we're both used to taking care of people and not being taken care of. So we have this like distance we keep because we don't know what to do. Anyways, so back to Art, art Deco. After World War I, it really kind of starts up in the 20s because um, it takes a while to, for Europe at least to recover from World War I. Right. And then um, it, 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 it ends kind of with World War II and then there's a revival in the 50s. Which is interesting because the 50s are looking at the 20s and the Art Deco movement. And then the 1980s looks at the 50s, which is looking at the 20s. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. So it's it's just like, there's a paper there for someone. Take it, write it. Okay, so if the <clears throat> 80s are looking at the 50s, looking at the 20s, then, because we're in the teens now. So when we had that 80s 30. revival in the early 2010s, it was the early 2010s looking at the 80s, which we're looking at the 50s, 50s which we're looking, looking at the 20s. 20s. This is okay. like fan fiction of fan fiction of fan fiction of fan fiction. Oh my god. My yeah, god. it's it's a painful, painful, it's like a dog sniffing the butt of another dog that is also sniffing its butt and running around in a circle. It's like an Aurora Boris of butt sniffing. It's like a doggy centipede of butt sniffing. Is it like the infinity sign of Yeah. A butt sniffing? Yeah. By the way, I asked my tattoo art if it artist if instead of an infinity sign on the back of my neck, if I should just get an infinity, like the car. And he told me that that was unacceptable as well because uh, white girls have ruined the infinity symbol. <laughs> That's fair. All right. So speaking of symbols and symbolism. Back to our art podcast. So Art Deco is short for Art Decoratifs. It's the damn French again. Deco Decoratif. 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 That's probably it. it Retifs. Do they S pluralize in French? Uh, you don't usually pronounce it unless you have a liaison between your um, okay. next word. So and your then word has to have so. somebody to like show it around the hotel. Yeah, basically. Okay, it's an escort service for French. I think the French invented escort services. So fair. All right. So that the arts decoratifs was referenced to a 1925 decoration show in Paris, France. There'll be a link in the show notes. Um, it's just a Wikipedia. You can look that up. 
<clears throat> the exhibition space that was for this show uh, still exists as a museum in Paris, much like the space that was used for the Chicago World Fair and the New York World Fair are still preserved and have museums within them. The Chicago World Fair, like where H.H. H. Holmes like murdered. Okay, the, the house where H.H. H. Holmes, uh, the, the one that he built that was like the murder palace. Of, the like, murder hotel. And right. stuff, uh, the, the people of the city of Chicago burned that shit down. I know. But the, the fair, the world's fair that was going on, yes, those buildings are still there. I know, but it's at the same time frame. You just touched my murder happy spot. I know. I'm well, you want to know, uh, you've been to Fair Park a good bit. That's where they have Irish Fest. And she's giving me a look. We'll not talk about Irish Fest again. You said it again! Yeah, and you got mad because I cheated on you with another podcast host. You did. You didn't even tell me about it beforehand, you bitch. I, did, I, needed, a, I needed a full slot. Anyways, he came up with he came up with the artist, so I got I, to be lazy. It was great. You needed to fill a slot, huh? Yeah, my slot's very lonely. So, but you have been to Fair Park in Dallas. You have seen very good examples of Art Deco architecture. One of the reasons. The city of Dallas has had a hard time ripping Fair Park down, even though it doesn't make them a ton of money, is that that is historically, historical and well-preserved pieces of Art Deco. Yes. And it's one of the few things of history that Dallas hasn't torn down. Yeah, Dallas loves tearing stuff down. Oh, so does Houston. It's, it's like a hobby. A which is funny because there's Hobby Airport in Houston. Get back to your podcast. I'm getting back to my podcast. Um, so, okay, the elements that make Art Nouveau what Art Nouveau is, once again, it means new art. It is kind of a bridgeway between modern concepts of exploring abstraction and art while holding on to older nature motifs. This means we're still looking at trees and shrubbery and shit, we, but we're just kind of making it a little abstract. But not so abstract, you can't tell it's not trees and shrubbery and shit. Right. I also probably should have mentioned the dancer Lowly Fleur. You should probably look her up. She danced with a bunch of like stick veils and mm -hmm. she's a big influence on Art Nouveau. Um, Actually, I think I knew that. Why did I know that? All right, look, UNT teachers, I'm going to smack you upside down. She learned something. This. How dare you? <sighs> she paid all that money and learned something. In the modern art genre. <sighs> it's Art Nouveau. It's kind of... It's always excessive. It's always expensive. And the people that collected Art Nouveau were extremely wealthy. This stuff tends to be gold leaf. It uses precious gems, other precious metals. It is not an art form of the people at all. There are some like public apartment buildings and uh, like hotels and stuff that are made in the Art Nouveau style, but they are very much for the wealthy elite. Um, it's also primarily decorative. There's very few painters who worked during this period. Gustav Klimt is one of the strong examples. A lot of the other people are like Aubrey Beardsley and Alphonse Mucha, who are really illustrators or admin. Mucha is kind of an advertising illustrator. Um, and that I am not saying illustration is not art. I would never, ever say that. It's just that it has a different intentionality than painting does. And painting tends to be how we lead people through the history of art, if you haven't noticed a theme in the podcast. Um, also, when we're talking about Art Nouveau, I want you to think about what's happening around 1890 to World War II. Um, Photography has become more commercially available. People can go on a vacation with a cheap brownie Hawkeye mouse produced camera oh, yeah. that takes 120 film and you like it's they're super archaic. Like you kind of like hold them and look down to put it in. But you still could. <clears throat> yeah, you could still take pictures of your vacation. Right. Um, so that's taking the place of a lot of like portraiture and allegory paintings because you just kind of don't need them mm -hmm. there's also uh recorded music at this point you know film exists there's movies like there's a film of the coronation of the first czar of russia which i believe was the late or the 1890s 1880s 1890s um and there's a 
abstraction is happening. You're starting to see things like cubism, impressionism is well underway. Um, so a lot of this like modernism and ability to explore is what creates Art Nouveau. Um, Art Nouveau also looks at uh, the, once again, the Japonism that was popular after the Mamiji restoration in the 1850s, where we're like flooded with all of these like Edo prints and stuff that no one has seen. So Art Nouveau takes on a lot of the elegant simplicity of Japanese style, which is weird because it also tends to be like Baroque level of excessive. Yeah. It's like kind it's more like Rococo, which is now considered a sub genre of Baroque. I could see that. Yeah. But uh, and Rococo is always a little less than Baroque, but it's very it, flashy. It's very flashy. A lot of Art Nouveau, especially the like French, Dutch and German styles are bright colors. We see black and white photos of them, but they're like vivid oranges, vivid purples, vivid greens, just really strong colors. And, I, you know, that's, it's considered kind of a garish style to some of the upper class that doesn't like it. You're, you're less modern people. Yeah. One of the other big uh, things that influences Art Nouveau is we become better at bending wood. There's a very famous <laughs> rocking chair from this period that's a, uh, the leg is like one long kind of like spiral mm -hmm. that goes to the back and like the, the, the part you lean on, on the chair is uh you know, one, pretty much one piece of wood. So the back. Yes. The back of the chair. What am I? Jeez. I'm, I'm like trying to be too smart for my own brains. Um, <laughs> But in being able to bend wood and cut more accurately, we're able to do a lot of these organic shapes. <laughs> and it's organic is the word I'm really gonna stress that goes across all styles of Art Nouveau. Um, bend wood. Bend wood, you just whispered bend wood at me because you're 12. So what, what kills Art Nouveau? Well, World War I seems like a really easy explanation, but you also have to think about, there is a small version of the Great Depression that does happen in the 1890s and kind of causes World War I. Right. Um, your kings are deposed a lot with World War I. The communists take over Russia, they kill the czar and redefine the wealthy class and they kind of, they hide their wealthy class more. I'm not going to say that there isn't a wealthy class in Russia during the communist years. It just wasn't accessible. Yeah. It's like how we don't really know who rules China. Um, because they hide it. It's, it's your, if your leader's hidden, it's safer. Uh, you know, we lose the Kaiser in Germany. Um, the German economy is really in the dumper. So that, that goes, there's, they're not making anything out of precious metals because they're broke. Um, you know, they form the Weimar Republic and that doesn't last very long. So it's by the time the 1920s roll around and Europe's kind of starting to rebuild, um, it's a very different landscape. And so this is when Art Nouveau starts up and, or Art Deco starts up, I'm sorry. So I want you to think of Art Deco as more of an every man's design. It's still looking at abstraction. They're still referencing nature. They're referencing some other stuff that we'll talk about, but they're doing things in chrome. They're doing things in steel, more affordable woods. They're mass producing elements because we have had Henry Ford's warehouse revolution. Mm -hmm. You know, we can make it for you in any color as long as it's black. Right. Do you like it in black? Because it comes in black. It comes in black. Um, you know, we can now, but that's the thing, we can now mass produce whatever product. Right. Um, so that, that makes us change how we see things and stuff like, you know, like you and me, we can afford an electric kettle now. We can afford a car. We can afford a radio to listen to at home. And so if we're going to go ahead and spend the money to get these things that are still kind of luxury items, but are now a little more affordable, we want them to look good. So, Hey, art deco stepping in, right? Hold on. 
I'm trying not to cough to death on pollen. Good luck. Another thing, and I'm going to kind of like change up how I was approaching this. So I'm going to go to topic B, Katie. Okay. Um, Art Deco also doesn't just look at nature. It looks at antiquities. Um, one of the big things that influences is something called pattern books, which were made available to artisans that are working in a more uh, mass production scale. Mm -hmm. they, they'd always been around. They're very collectible. But these pattern books begin to reflect uh, eclectic elements from all over the world. So even when you're making cheaper furniture, these guys are unintelligently pulling from these pattern books. So sometimes you'll get like this reference to ancient Egypt alongside like a reference to ancient China. Art Deco doesn't adhere to one piece of history. It kind of pulls. It kind from... of pulls from everything. And it's not just the pattern books that do this, but this is something worth mentioning because these become way more available because printing is getting better and better and better. Right. And it's literally something like you would draw a copy of the pattern in the pattern book, transfer it to like wood or metal or stone or whatever you're doing, and then cut it out and then adhere that. So you can do this a whole bunch of times. Uh, I think your mom had a lot of Art Deco furniture and there was some where you'd like see an element on like this one piece that's like kind of from one part of the world and then kind of from another part of the world and then mixed with some like very modern like lines and elements. Yeah. yeah. I still have, I have our Art Deco clock that your stepdad didn't want because he's a dumbass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we're gonna say about that <sighs> and I, I mentioned egypt that's another it's a really big thing to bring up here the valley of the kings was discovered by napoleon or mapped by napoleon really right and it had been a big deal for a really long time because europeans were going in there with excavation license and pulling stuff up what happens in 1922 when art decos in its infancy is king tut's tomb Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. And uh, why is that a big deal, Katie? Uh, the, he was actually one of the only intact uh, kings to be found at that point. Uh, he hadn't been, insofar as he hadn't been grave, ro grave robbed, it was actually kind of a plague. That's why they stopped putting pharaohs in big, huge temples that even though they were trapped and even though there were several different ways to keep people from robbing the tombs they still got robbed anyway people so that's why the valley of the kings was created they started hiding them in cliff burials they still got robbed tutankhamun is the first one that was cohesive and all together um he if i remember my ancient egyptian uh lineage correctly he was directly after Tutuk Aten, who decided to try to take the religion, the mini pantheon religion that Egyptians had worshipped for thousands of years. It was a static religion along with their static art style. And Tutuk Aten came up with a monotheistic god called Aten. It was a sun god with many hands that would descend down and the style became more naturalistic and he started implementing all these changes really quickly and so they killed him um and Tutankhamun was put into place after him i think he was actually named after akhenaten there for a little bit but they changed his name back um they went back to the polytheistic religion they went back to the static art style and then he was killed too so Sorry? You just pulled all that out of your ass. No, that's actually accurate. No, 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 no! Like, I didn't write that down. Right. You just, like, remembered that. I really liked my uh, <laughs> teacher who told me that. That was Miss Lurison from I mean, this Allen is all right, and, like, part of why Tut's tomb is intact is, like, struck his name off of a bunch of stuff because they were so mad at those guys. Right. I mean, he was... The they didn't know to look for it. Right. And and he was kind of like, he was propped up as a figurehead and I think he was named Pharaoh at like nine Yeah, or something. he was really young. Redonkulously young. And then he was killed by 14, so... 
I think I can't remember if they decided if you. If it yeah, was I didn't mean that you or... made it up. I meant like Jesus Christ, this was all just sitting in your brain. Oh yeah, I love it. That's uh, if if we ever do ancient Egyptian anything else, we need to touch on Queen Hatshepsut, who is the only queen pharaoh, and then all her stuff got destroyed because she was a queen, and then they actually found some kind of graffiti um, inside her temple that was somebody the queen nice um to denigrate her further and they left that up but any name of any occurrence of the name hapshet suit has been struck from temples but she actually um ruled yeah i you know so it, this is also one of the once again Sorry. king tutankhamun's tomb was photographed and those photographs were widely available because of improved printing processes and interests and so this influences art deco i'm just really impressed with katie and i'm a little scared and she's touching me now and that's like making me even more scared because i'm scared she wants to talk about that dirty graffiti some more and i don't really know what she's talking about because i'm a virgin oh please uh, hey <clears throat> why do i have all my babies in the summer another like one of the kids <laughs> no we're not we're not talking about that ever again what if, it's really cold in the winter. Uh, one of the keys to, is it Art Deco? Does it have chevrons on it? Chevrons are like little parallel triangle-y thingies. Like, like you see on the Chevron gas station logo. Right? You gotta quit laughing so that we can like go on with this shit show of podcast. <clears throat> Sometimes chevrons kind of look like a sunburst, like geometric pattern. Also a lot of parallel lines. Usually they curve, and this is a reference to, in the roughly around the twenties, they figure out how to bend tube steel and have it keep that like elegant flowing line, and that's why in the eighties, when we're looking back at the fifties, when we're looking back at the twenties, everybody has those damn chairs with the bent tube steel God. and the little tiny black back and the little. Ah! Those are the leather and you fucking stick to them because it's 120 because you live in Texas. And everybody leaves everything in the out of doors, which is stupid because it's going to die in two seconds anyway, yeah, it's like, including your chairs. Did you buy patio furniture with the color red on it? Well, it's pink now. Congratulations. Did you buy patio <clears throat> furniture with any color on it? Congratulations. It's faded. You so, left it outdoors two days. If you see a kind of modern looking chair that has bent tubular steel, and you're like, huh, I wonder what period that's at least referencing, if not from, probably Art Deco. The bounce back to the bounce back to the, the bounce, bounce back. back. Well, no, they built chairs like that in the 20s, but they got really popular in the 80s, because everybody likes stuff that looks like it belonged on the Death Star. And I've they were usually chrome, this. and chrome was big in the 80s. So was shoulder pads and yeah. poofy hair. Yeah, jeez. So people never got over that. New Jersey. Dallas. Fair. Still see old ladies with helmet hair. Mm. So next, <coughs> chevrons, which I do remember on mom's old dresser because she had all that art deco. The chevron, um, she had that one dresser that was the mixed wood panels on the front that yeah. had almost like zebra wood, I think, mm -hmm. on the front. And then it had that chevron on the top. So. Yeah, and, and of course with like art deco, if you have the money it's a very nice wood but there's a lot of it that's mass produ produced oh like i imagine cheaper softer woods it, with the uh, varnishes are another big thing yeah uh not varnishes i'm sorry uh, la uh overlays inlay. inlay 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 is a big thing in art deco um especially if it forms some kind of like geometric pattern you know i art nouveau Flowy, curvy lines, Art Deco, geometrics. Okay. Geometrics. If you're like going, what's what's a what's a famous example of Art Deco? Uh, you ever played the Bioshock games one or two? Those are all Art Deco. That underwater city is Art Deco, and it fits with Ayn Rand, who was writing in that period. Anyways, Art Nouveau. Also, the is... film Metropolis. That's the very famous film from the 1920s with like the robot and there's a woman with bare boobies and it's part of why the Haynes Code eventually came along. Very, very Art Deco. That is like the Art Deco film. So Elvish 
uh, architecture. You know how it has that natural wood and it always like has from the those... real Elvish forest. Yes, and the from... Shire. But I of, mean, when you reality every time they do a freaking Tolkien movie, yes, for a fantasy are, style, they're Art Nouveau. That's, Thank it you. It is a good example. You're welcome. I just wanted to give you shit because you that, can. That's the basis of our friendship. I see nothing wrong with this. Indeed, you love it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's also Art Nouveau did have a resurgent in the 60s with a uh, psychedelic art because it's kind of trippy. Everything's kind of trippy kinda when you're trippy. on LSD. Well, yeah, hallucinogens, they're what's for breakfast. I mean, don't do drugs, don't kids. do drugs. drugs That's twice as two podcasts in a row. I don't I'm actually like one of the most sober people I know. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> All right, let's do our compare let's and compare contrast. Compare and contrast. We're gonna have to do it on your computer because it's not coming up. Yeah, it's, I figured we we'd flip through this. Um, so you'll hear me clicking on my laptop. Aren't you all thrilled about that? So on the left, we have the Glasgow School, which is Charles Rene Macintosh. Okay. On the right. We have an example of an Art Deco conference table. I don't remember who did this one. I don't think I had the name. Frankel? Frankel. I love Frankel's work. This is not one I'm particularly fond of, but I wanted to contrast two tables. The Macintoshes are... this. The Glasgow School is kind of a difficult Art Nouveau style because it is a little more geometric, but you can still see on the chair backs, there's the very like rounded top parts. They they're obviously referencing lilies. There's the little uh, spots in the center and the two. Yes, Katie, it looks like a penis. Quit making that hand gesture. <laughs> You're making the hand gesture right now. For the like, British nothing. flip off, but I'm like showing you how these two parallel lines come out of the top like a freaking lily. <laughs> I see the lily. You now. see the lily. It's like obviously a lily. And the table's got those like very elegant curved lines underneath. And there's like the curved lines with the like parallel lines. So it looks kind of like a, you know, some kind of plant thing. It looks like happy penis chairs to me. <laughs> happy penis chairs. Because do you see? I, mean, I guess it's the... better than angry penis chairs. Well, they're very happy. They're standing upright. They're standing well in there. <sighs> I need to just flag all of these as explicit. Anyways. <laughs> Is Katie on it? There you go. It, it, it's very obvious they're made out of wood, even though they're painted white. The wood word just made her giggle and cover her mouth, and she's blushing slightly because she's a bad, bad kid. Ginger kids are the best, Joe. Um, <laughs> yes, so the, there's the elegant curvature, and it looks like a lily penis. Why does everything in nature look like a penis or a vagina? Because nature wants to procreate, or it's because we're perverts. Anyways, the tape, the Frankel, is a black lacquer that is very shiny with a, it's uh, round. Uh, there's an under element that is bright red. It just has spindle legs. The chairs are like spindle legs, with like a black connector that's geometric, and they're a very simple leather. I hate it. You can see the like stepped color, but you can see like this is made in the 20s, but it looks like the 1980s. It does. It does. Very much Very look much like the 1980s. So. It's like Darth Vader's conference table. Oh man, we need to be speaking in British accents around it and plotting the demise of Alderaan. I just read The Princess Diarist, by the way. I feel like Carrie Fisher at 19 was probably a lot like I was at 19, but maybe that's universal. Mm. So let's look at the next one. I believe that's Vandeveld and uh, the check-in area for the Chrysler building. Vandeveld and Van Allen. Van Allen designed the Chrysler building. That's right. Um, I believe Van Allen Arena in New York is designed by him. I could be wrong. Because, you know, the New York was founded by the damn Dutch. So there's a lot of old Dutch names. Damn the Dutch. Vandeveld is legitimately a Dutchman. He's later one of the people that work with the Bauhaus. He had, yeah, he's I mean, interesting. I think I've mentioned him before. He took the concept from Wagner of whole art because Wagner would have everything designed all the way down to like the tickets 
mm -hmm. match his operas. And Vandeveld wanted to make sure that all of the materials in his rooms, right down to the furniture, and Lloyd Wright adapts this. Um, they all coordinate and match. So if you ever really take anything out of this room or add to this room, you're subtracting from the art of it or the design of it, which becomes problematic in living spaces. And it's problematic in Frank Lloyd Wright living spaces because he was a short shit and planned everything for how like little tiny he was. So um, Alyssa would go great there is what you're saying. She'd bonk into the, yeah, the ceiling. Like my husband would have to duck to go through doorways. Melissa's tiny. Oh, with that Melissa. Okay. I know too many Melissa's. I have too many Salsa friends. You're a Vanessa. Yeah. Yeah. Your poor son. He gets us really confused. Um, the Vandeveld, this wallpaper that's at the top, that's obviously like kind of a flowing flower geometric is very brightly colored. Um, these are, there's like these looped uh, round spaces around the mirrors um like giving it's, it it's a rich wood in fact there's this uh curving kind of like is this an inlay yeah mosaic? i think that that's yeah it's an inlay mosaic it's obviously referencing chinese art um there and it's repeated over here underneath the i actually think that's a wet bar it was the 20s yeah it's a hotel interior so actually this is like 1890s and you can see that the sofa has like similar wood elements that curve and bend in once again all referencing nature all very organic um using rich materials in excess but still with that kind of like you can he hints at the white space like there's no pattern on the sofa it's still pretty bare um he does allow these like mirrored areas that enlarge the room but also uh you know provide some like kind of white space whereas in contrast the van allen hotel interior from the chrysler building in new york it's pretty stark um it's a, it's a marbled floor that's in black gold and white uh, there's like a geometric square pattern, geometric, geometric square pattern. Uh, what's in front of, I think, either a doorway or an elevator. It's hard to tell. Um, there's a little more ornate, like square decoration over the top with light bulbs. It seems to reference like Victorian press ceilings. But the wood walls and the doorways are a simple just, you know, granular motif and marble and wood. Um, and then that black marble is repeated in the desk, which has a kind of a VW logo. And then there's the, I think that that's like the check-in bureau behind it, or this is a reception desk with like a simple black marble drawers that you can pull out and what looks like a black marble clock worked into a mantle. It just, it looks so 1940s, Nighthawk. This is very nice. This is 1920s, but yeah, it's, but you know this, I, this goes on for a long time. Right. Like, it has that like stark geometric, like I feel like I'm walking into a, a film noir scene yeah. almost. Yeah. And film noir, that would be, that's around the right time frame. Um, and you can see like the more mass produced elements, like these identical table lamps that look like right. they're in just like a cheap pewter um while that is a black marble it's not carved or treated in a way that makes it excessively expensive um you know and once again we're talking geometrics versus the flowing lines <clears throat> okay this is the one where i couldn't find one of the artists um on the what is my left is a job cigarette ad by alphonse muka on my right is a Saima watch ad from the 19, the mid 1920s. Um, the Job cigarette ad is very famous. It's a woman with uh, ridiculously poofy and flowing hair that almost looks like vines. That um, are twisting and curling and almost and she alive. has her face tilted up in this kind of like almost lip biting ecstatic smile 
and she's wearing this like kind of like Grecian shift robe underneath. Job is hidden hidden behind her. There's a thick like decorative outline that's actually in chevrons, but it's Art Nouveau. Look at the hair. And then she's holding the cigarette, which bends behind her like her hair in uh like this curving how do you elegant smoke what the i don't know it's like she's giving the devil horns but still holding a cigarette i don't understand her hand <clears throat> movement and i'm trying to replicate it and even vanessa's trying and, and i'm a former smoker how do you hold a cigarette like that like that i guess you like use your ring finger and your middle finger and like hold it between them and then like curve it back in but then it but that looks like her pointer well, don't, finger oh yeah it is her pointer finger because that's her thumb well don't right. europeans like they smoke with the pointer finger and the middle finger that's that's how normal people smoke so she's just like curved it back and made devil horns which yeah, is okay this kind of advertising it's not about the product it's about the artwork yeah it's and this is it changes you can see it starting to change in the art deco piece on the right the watch that Saima is selling is featured prominently. You know that this is a watch ad and this just becomes more and more the case as the 20th century evolves. Um, the woman, I think she's a reference to Theta Barra who played Cleopatra in an early silent film. Um, she kind of has the same like eye and hair treatment and it looks like a famous photo of her. Um, she's obviously a flapper, but her dress is like very flat with these like parallel geometric elements and blue strips. Her jewelry is all treated as like these very flat geometric patterns. Uh, there's not a lot of detail to her face or hair and the background's just kind of a gentle wash instead of a um, pattern like the Art Nouveau piece. You can see where the modernists that are into like Dadaism and surrealism have taught these ad men that they can be more simple. Mm -hmm. You can even see it in the font style because when we look at this Job yeah. cigarette, I mean, it's still, the edges are lined in a gold. Like kind of filigree. Right, yeah. filigree type thing. I mean, even if it's a ad that's printed, it'll still have the hints of that. And the interior of the letters still has like that rich kind of patterning. Yeah, this is a real shit color reproduction of the Job cigarette thing. It's very, very green, but I think they changed the background a little to bring out right. the pattern that is there. Right. The But I mean, and the font is a little bit curly and it's just got that little hint yeah. of organic twirl to it. Where in the Saima ad over here, it's, the font is very simple. It's Capital very uniform. Yep. The, it's only a thin black outline with a pale yellow wash behind it. And, you know, and it's interesting, and like, it. Mooka invented the, like, Art Nouveau font that you think about when we, if you, you've probably seen it where it's, like, real organic and flowy, and I think it's used in the, like, the early Paris metropolitan stops had the like signs that says like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. metropolitan over the top and that like kind of flowery font and the, the subways are Art Nouveau in those parts. Here is Aubrey Beardsley versus Arte. And he's actually a Russian that he chose to go by Arte. I can't say his actual name. That's his birth name. E R T E. If you're ever gonna look. Him yeah, up. the t the E's got the little tilde. Tilde is that what that's called? I'm not a language major. Um, Audrey Beardsley. This is. He did several versions of this, but this is one of his more famous ones of Salome having received the head of John the Baptist. Holy cow. Um, Salome looks like kind of a shrewd witch in this. Like Muka, it's uh, she has very like flowing and snake-like hair. So, um, Salome is the one that danced for King Herod, and uh, it was his like stepdaughter, and she seduced Herod, and as a reward, asked for the head of John the Baptist. Um, 
emerging from behind her are these like dragon scaled round elements. Uh, there's water beneath her, one of which is like this ornate lily that is kind of also, you know, genital referencing. Um, the you can see the Japanese influence in this with like the very delicate handling of uh, the water movement and how there's this like drip of blood that like elegantly swerves up into John the Baptist's, uh, you know, decapitated head. Um, it's, it's both busy and simple in a weird way. It just, it reminded me, Goya did a series of didactic prints that I did for my, as a group project for my senior thesis. Um, God, and, and my professor would kill me because I can't remember the name now to save my life. But it, he did this series of didactic prints that kind of taught you all the morals of the century, but also kind of mocked them because he didn't believe in all those morals. And one of them had a witch flying through almost exactly in that same position. Beardsley was well-educated, so he would have been aware of that. You know who one of his really famous supposed lovers was? Um, you know, it was important to be earnest. Oh, yeah, that is, that Goya. That's that's a good call, Katie. I did a thing! So so who's, who's who wrote uh, The Importance of Being Earnest? I don't know. Come on, come on, he's like a famous British uh, um. satirist. Satirist, satirist. He was gay as hell. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll remember because I'm blanking on his name as well. <laughs> uh, dear Google, dear Google, I've had a day to day where I did things during the day. Oscar Wilde, Oscar Wilde, God. Audrey Beardsley, supposedly had an affair with Oscar Wilde, or at least I've heard that. Right. Um, I think he's another, he's 27 or 29 club. He died very, very young of tuberculosis, um, but did an impressive amount of beautiful work for how young he was. Like, would you pick that as an artist in his 20s? No. Um, on the right, Erte, this is actually an illustration for a costume. Obviously it's a flapper dress and you can see how naughty those flappers were. Flappers are one of the things I think of when people start talking about our good and moral past that never existed. The 1920s. Did you see the 1920s? Yeah, and it's there's always something like what it, Shelley and Byron. They had basically like a dynastic orgy club. Yeah. Um. So. Erte, this dress, it's it's got a very low V cut, which is why we say that. And then the bottom part also comes up in a V. Like, I feel like this is something you kind of... A very high kinda, V and a very low V. And the Vs are damn near touching. You could not wear a bra with this. And you probably needed to pin it in place to make sure your hoochie coochie did not show. I'm pretty sure that's the like, only thing she's covering So I think at front. the same time, like, I don't see how you wear underwear or wear that dress at mm. all. Like, any kind of underwear. Because I don't think there were thongs in the 1920s. Mm. Don't, I mean, fashion people, please let me know if there were thongs in the 1920s. No, please don't. I don't want to know. <laughs> but I want to see great grandma's thong. Oh, good lord. <laughs> but anyway, the illustration is is again a lot simpler. Um, the background is just a plain wash. The female figure is very simple. There's no not a whole lot of detail put in. It's very two dimensional. She has her fan is a uh, sunburst chevron, and there's a lot of parallel lines in the dress and dripping off the fan. And I mean, obviously, like the female figure is very flat to draw attention to the dress and fan, which is what he was selling. But you know, when you compare to that to Beardsley, it's like, okay, Beardsley, like, why did you have to do so much? I don't get it. I don't get it. So I think we hit the end here. I was gonna like contrast the okay cathedral by gaudy okay art nouveau or art deco do, 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 okay do. is it russian it's spanish gaudy is actually where the word gaudy comes from because okay, you can see yeah. he's overdoing it so if we're overdoing it, it is probably 
Art Nouveau. Good job, Katie. And you can see they're still working on it. They've never finished working on this thing. They never will. <laughs> Spain is not doing really well right now. So. Oh, but yeah, Gaudi is that's he's like one of the big Spanish ones, and it's as you can see, it's just ridiculous. It's very organic. Uh, it references Gothic cathedrals, but with like really round spirals and stuff. Okay, this famous building from New York that might or might not be the Chrysler Building, Art Nouveau, or Art Deco. Deco. Good. I just said that like five times that it was. Who did it? Van Allen. Van Allen. Yeah, and you can see the chevron triangles at the top, the repeating parallel right. curved I, lines. For whatever reason, I knew this. And also, didn't he keep the the post in the center, that that top part, so that the sh it could be the tallest tower? Like yeah. they didn't unveil it until after. Um, and what's neat is like these like very top parts. You can go up in that, and it's technically an office. I don't think they lease it out. And you they can filmed see part of Doctor Who up there. I think maybe probably it's, it's very weird looking up there. Actually, I think I've seen that episode. They did. It's one where like, there's kind of a dystopian thirties. It's yep, got the, the Hooverville, pigmen. the Hooverville. Yep. Yep. Um, and David Tennant. Oh, I remember how we talked about mixing styles. You have this very modern facade with this kind of geometric reference to like the Egyptian sun and hanging off of it are these chrome gargoyles that are streamlined and modern. Yeah. I encourage you to like Google and look them up because they're actually really cool looking. I think I have before. I'll do it again. Will we'll it do make it you again. happy? We did it before and we can do it again and we can do it again. It's an ancient cartoon. Um, so do you feel like you can kind of tell the difference between Art Nouveau and Art Deco now, Katie? Yes. Yes. Are you just saying that so I'll let you go home because it's like 10 30 at night? No. Okay. <laughs> She's like, please don't send me home. It, it, I mean, I, I, I will do it by first, you know, if I look at it and judge it on different merits. And then I'm just going to look at the time period it was created. Yeah, that's the, e the easy trick is if you have a date. If you don't have a date, is it organic and excessive? Probably Art Nouveau. Is it simplified, modern, and references like a whole bunch of crap, but still pretty simple? Art Deco. Right. Gaudy, Art Nouveau, simple, Art Deco. Gold, Art Nouveau, chrome, Art Deco. Carved marble and gold filigree and um, all sorts of precious materials. Black marble, simple, Maybe a little like silver lining that's chrome and chevrons, much chevrons, parallel art, lines, art, art deco, art burpo, art burpo. Excellent. I'm a lady. You are. I had Mexican food for dinner and just beat me up. Oh my god! You and your cheese foods. I just cheese hates me, but I love it. Mm -hmm. Is it better to have loved than lost than never loved at all? When it comes to cheese, the answer is yes. The chin, well, I mean... Because <laughs> if I didn't know, I would eat it. The repercussions are still coming after you. By the way, I want to say, during this whole podcast, we have been monitored by my cat, Maple, and she has not deemed it necessary to come over and bite us, so we're doing good. We're doing great. Um, do we need to tell them about the the matchy-matchy that we have going on now? Oh, yeah, let's, we got best friend tattoos. Oh, my God, we totally did. <laughs> We, uh, we uh, can touch our feet together and with our powers combined form Captain Felix Gonzalez Torres. We got the little, like, the two clocks touching. Right. And, and we made everybody cry in the tattoo parlor with the uh, inscription on it because we got the hand drawn clocks that Felix Gonzalez Torres did with the. The um, love letter to with the Ross love Lake letter Clark. printed like we didn't get the love letter printed obviously yeah that's but a little much. we'll post pictures on instagram someday when they're fully healed you can see my kinkles they're beautiful you can see mine and right now they look blue because my legs don't ever get circulation sun that too yeah well the sun makes you catch fire so the the israeli kid um yeah, no, the Israeli kid I was talking to today at my work, I was like, you know, oh, God, the sun's out. It's a beautiful day. I'm driving me nuts. And he's like, what's wrong? I was like, I can't go outside. He's like, why? 
And I was like, have you seen how albino I am? I think about sunshine and I get a second degree sunburn. So no. And like this kid is like dark hair and tan skin. And he's like, I don't see a problem. And I'm like, you people with melanin. Right. What's that like? We All don't. mine's in my hair. Anyways. <laughs> and your eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, I have eyebrows. Let me tell you what that's like, Katie. I they catch dust. Shut up. <laughs> I can hate you. All right, we're going to shut this up. You guys are probably bored already. <laughs> this has been Art I Swear. Uh, thank you to Joe Giggs, who uh, lives near the, sh the, the Chevrons in the Chrysler building and maybe looks at them sometimes. Joe Giggs for your DJing in New York City. And also, thank you to the Iridial Conant Project people for our samples. What, what? Also, samples? check out my Phantom of the Podcast, phantompodcast.com. It's everything Phantom of the Opera. It's everything you could ever want that is Phantom of the Opera. And I'm Katie Giggs. Katie Giggs. K Katie Gotti. Katie Wama. And I'm Vanessa Muka. <laughs> That's lovely. Right. And this has been Art, I swear. Have a creative day. Creative day. I stole it from you. Yay.